Never say this if you go to Japan. After spending half of my youth in Japan, I know things that you should never say if you go to Nippon. So if you were even thinking of going to Japan and testing out some of your anime phrases you might have learned online, here are five things you should never say if you go to Japan to prevent any tatakai moments. Number one, never say you, especially if it's teme kisama, omae. Like in Japan, if you already know that person's name, saying you is already a little disrespectful. So then, if you go to Japan and say kisama no namae wa nanda, they'll be like, kono hito chotto. They'll probably never talk to you again. So avoid using you in general and especially don't say teme. Number two, never say damare because it's even stronger than just shut up. So in Japanese, there's basically three levels of shut up that you can say and each level goes with each severity. I would say first, if you're in Japan and someone's like and you're like a little busy and annoyed, you, you got things to do, you can, you can, you can just say Gomen, chotto. And that basically means, sorry, can you just be quiet? Just for a second, can you just be quiet? Be quiet. Then if that little ankle biter, the little 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 Japanese kid goes, You could pull out that level two because he's annoying. He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like poking you. He's a little bit annoying. So you could pull out the level two and you could say, Which literally means you're loud and stop being loud because I'm trying to do something over here. So is definitely, you know, it's not the worst thing you could say, but it's definitely a lot more hurtful than just she's gonna stay. She's gonna stay is like, can you be quiet Urusayo now you're saying you're loud and it's more commanding it's now now looking down upon a little bit more than before but then there's a level three so if the kid is like now he's really pissed and he says oh my oh teme now you are also very angry he crossed the line and you will have the permission to use damaregake which means shut up you little kid basically. Now with conjugations in Japanese, you could be a little creative with damare. You don't have to just always say damare. You could put a little flair, a little emotional flair with it. And I'll show you some of the conjugations I personally like to use because, you know, people always annoy me. The first one you could say is like, damare tsutendaro, which is like, I said, shut up. I've been saying for you to shut your mouth. Damari agare is like, I'm pissed emotionally and I'm commanding you to just shut your mouth. And then the jokingly, damate kudasai, which is like, can you please shut up? It's funny because you're being formal, you're formally telling that person to shut up. All of them though that I just mentioned at this point because you're using damare will definitely hurt that person's feeling. It's a lot harder than shut up. It is really a little bit more like shut the hell up. Even if you're here, you would trigger some little, little bit of backfire. That person might ironically be more upset after using these words. And you can't really put a positive twist, a little positive turn around this. So I would say stick with the levels. You know, if someone's bothering you first, just say she's gonna stay. And then, you know, level two, urusai. And then three, Number three, never say GG or Baba, especially to elderly people. It could, it could be very, very rude. I think if you've been watching anime for some time, you might have seen anime protagonists say, oh, GG or Baba. It's definitely not the protagonist, but you might have thought that, oh, that's a cute way of uh, calling your grandma, grandparents, older people. You know, that shows like a little kawaii relationship you you have with them. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's actually very rude and just don't say it. Like GG and Baba is commonly translated, I see, as like old hag, but obviously you don't use old hag. I don't know when the the last time I have actually heard someone say old hag to a to a person in America but I know people don't say I didn't even know what a hag was and nonetheless an old one but Gigi and Baba is ironically common to refer to an older person that's and you you're, you're saying that you're useless I don't respect you no respect is given I think you're stupid I think you're a little baka so if you want to actually refer to an older man or older woman with actual respect you just want to say oji san or oba san that is the most common no one would think you're rude you you know you know how to be you respectful to elderly people you know they they are actually a flip pyramided Japanese population so they're majority of the population in Japan so you gotta show respect to them you know if you want to be a little kind of cute you know form a relationship that you're close with that elderly person you don't want to say gg or baba because that's that's just never cute 
most of the time, I trust me, you could instead put an honorific called Chan. Chan is referring to someone that is cute, and you might think that's kind of disrespectful, isn't it? No, not necessarily, because if you're close with that person, you refer to them as cute and you know in a more genuine way, it's not necessarily disrespectful. That one could actually mean that you're close to each other. So you could say oji chan for old man and oba chan for older woman. And then you'll be like, hey, you guys are actually close. But if you say Gigi, they're like, that kid is very disrespectful. <laughs> So if you get kind of close, it might not be the worst thing to say. Obachan no mitarashi dango. Mine mo mitcha oishi. Motto tsukute. Grandma's rice dumplings covered by sweet sauce. This little brown sweet sauce is delicious. I had them all the time. Mitarashi dango. Oh, it's so good. Sounded pretty good, right? But if you instead you said baba no mitarashi dango, mama umaine. Just don't say it. It's not a compliment anymore. I think I got my point across. Uh, just don't say jiji or baba. Uh, maybe ji chan. Always a chan there, but with just plain GG baba. Ba -ba. Never say yamete or yamete kudasai, especially if you don't understand how Japanese people actually use it. Now, this one I have to say it's more of a bigger meme in America than uh, Japan, purely because of the fact that Japanese people speak Japanese. So, uh, can you stop yamete kudasai? Is commonly used unlike the weebs who took it over because they never use yamete kudasai in their daily lives because of that i think people might think of it as a as a, in, in an incorrect way a misconception about what when japanese people might use it that's because yamete means stop yamete kudasai means can you please stop kudasai is please and you say that when you want someone to stop doing anything just just anything now you can also say yamero, which you probably didn't even know, did you? Yamero, which is basically a little bit of a masculine command form for someone to say stop, which actually maybe you know. You can also say yamete kurenai. It's kind of like, can you please do me a favor and just stop? You're not that commanding, but you're like kind of getting annoyed. So it's a lot less direct. So all of those are common, including yamete kudasai, which is probably you would use to tell someone that is like a little bit above status to stop doing something. That's it. That's that's all that it means. It is used in Japan. If you're walking around, you might hear it, but it just means to stop doing what you're currently doing, which could be anything, which could include something, but it could be all something else. Like you can also use it, you know, there's no technically other connotations behind it, especially in Japan. It's just that the weeb culture, the weeb wave took it and they made it, you know, I always get so many questions. What's yamete kudasai? Can you say yamete kudasai? First of all, no one wants to hear me say yamete kudasai. Are you sick? Are you so sick I'm just kidding. so if you hear it in japan don't be like oh that's the meme that's a great meme no because japanese people use it all the time it's not a meme first of all it's not a meme so i would just have to say now five although it might be kind of funny at least in public never say shine or korosuzo so shine is a basically a command form to command someone to die and korosuzo which literally means i'm going to kill you right now or maybe in the future now you might have already known that japanese language doesn't actually have a curse or a swear word so like you're not gonna go to detention if you go to say it in school no one's gonna completely freak out but obviously some vocabulary are much stronger and much hurtful than others that will raise an alarm so therefore i would say shine or korosuzo will be one of those top alert words that was just never used and if someone hears it or you say it it's gonna be like what the hell just happened between those two or between those people that is that is extreme you might have heard it all the time in anime especially if you watch action attack on titan korosuzo and shine will be all the all all, all across the anime scene jotaro you know everything you know thorfinn shine korosuzo is always always you know it's kind of sounds cool you know you feel that energy and you, you know you feel that energy going inside you you're like i want to say shine if i go to japan but if you go to japan and say shine even to your friends as a joke japanese people would turn around and be like not that they're gonna think that you're gonna kill someone probably not you know they're not gonna think they're gonna actually you you you're actually gonna want someone to die but they'll be like that kid's got some screws loose and that kid maybe wants some trouble with another kid and i don't want to be near him so that near him or her so that will cause you to make one less tomodachi and i don't want you to deal with that you know i don't want people to think that you want someone to 
die metaphorically. I guess basically I'm saying that korosuzo or shine is implying that someone is really angry at another person and that's gonna create some discomfort within the Japanese community. You're not gonna really be aware of how it's gonna be perceived in Japan even if you really meant it as a joke. So I would say just stick with the classics if you wanna insult someone. I'm not saying don't insult someone, but if you're gonna insult someone, just stick with the classic. You know, baka, aho, boge, busu. Probably not that one. That's, you know, not, 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 not that chibi. Not that one's not kimoi, not not you know, but those those will be all right. You know, those are kind of funny. I mean, especially compared to shine, it'll, it'll be fun. It'll you know, those are those are those are a little bit more casual, a little bit more you know, yeah. You're just, you're just messing around. You're a little chibi. You're a little you know. I just called you chibi, but you know, I, mean, I was just messing around. So basically, anime phrases are not the worst thing to dip your toes into your training arc to learning Japanese. You know, a little bit, a little bit of juice you need to continue on that journey. Cause some of them could actually be useful and used all the time. Like gambatte, gambare. You know, those are the phrases that you know to try your best. It doesn't necessarily exist that direct phrase. So having a cultural context is pretty useful. However, you don't want to pigeonhole yourself. You don't want to be a pigeon going into a hole because you have a misconception of what phrases actually mean. I'm talking I'm talking to all of you. And that certain memes, you're going to think, oh, Japanese people must know that meme. No, because some memes are not funny because Japanese people speak Japanese. So it's not going to have that connection to think that it's going to be funny because it's just a word. Do you know what I'm saying? So definitely watch other media, you know, J-pop, J-pop's popping off, you know, a little bit of J-trap, a little bit of J-drama, a little bit of Japanese movie, uh, you know, take, take all medias because anime could be a little bit of a pigeonhole sometimes. To prevent any moments of tatakai to happen, you know, if you go to Japan, you don't want that. So that's why it's good to take in as much actual cultural context as possible. I'm here to help you on your journey. Leave a comment if you need any help on any Japanese material leave a like it helps up the channel join the nakama and subscribe peace